Hello. I wonder if any of you have been watching the services that we've been having online and if any of you have sent in any photos for the section at the end where people are invited to, to, to take pictures on a particular theme. Last week I suggested that the theme might be spirit and interestingly not many people sent any pictures in. I wonder if you might have done a bit better if you'd if you'd had a go. Feel free to try this coming week because it's difficult isn't it to think about the Holy Spirit because we we kind of know it's there but we can't really see it so how do you put it across in a photograph? It's perhaps a little bit like um, electricity say where, where you can't actually see it but then you switch on the light and you know that it's there or maybe it's like a breath where you can't see it but you can see the effect that it has. In the Bible, God's spirit is described in, in a few different ways. One of them is like a um, great fire. I haven't got a great fire here, but I've got a little candle. You might just be able to see. Sometimes it's described as a breath or a wind, sometimes like a dove. And in the Bible reading that is set for this Sunday, we hear about the disciples gathering in a room after Jesus has gone back to heaven, after the resurrection, and they're praying. And then some quite incredible things happen. First of all, there's a violent wind that shakes them and rushes through the room that they're in. And then there are what appears to be like tongues of fire on each of their each of their heads and this to us perhaps is a sense of God's spirit in a very powerful way. The disciples then went from that room. How did they feel I wonder? They must have been amazed, they must have been slightly shaken, they must have been well spurred on perhaps by something else and they go to Jerusalem which is a city, like many cities, which has lots of people from all over the world in it, working there, holidaying there, and they speak all sorts of different languages. And then what happened was the disciples suddenly found that they could speak in lots of different languages and the people there could understand them. So they were able to share the um, love of God and the good news about Jesus in languages that people could understand. So once again, we see that the Holy Spirit had an effect. We might not quite understand how or see the Spirit at work, but these people could understand these different languages. So what effect does the Holy Spirit have on us? I'm quite worried about the possibility of a, a violent wind rushing through the house or, or tongues of fire. So in a way, I hope it's not like that. But I wonder if sometimes it is like a gentle breeze. Just gently, when we need to know that God is with us, somehow we sense that he is. Maybe sometimes it is like a, a warm, powerful feeling inside us, a bit like a fire. Maybe we feel that when, when we don't like what's going on with somebody, perhaps there's, there's someone being bullied in the playground and we feel that we've got to stand up for what's right and something inside us spurs us on to do that. Maybe sometimes the spirit gives us courage, helps us to do something good or loving, like those disciples who went and spoke to people in their own languages. We might feel a bit nervous we might have to do something at, at school for our class, like stand up and, and talk from the front. And if we pray for God's help, maybe that sense of the spirit gives us courage. Or maybe we'll see a homeless person on the, on the street asking for money and um, we, we need the courage to go and to give some. So I've been thinking of a few craft ideas to help us think about the fact that we can't see the spirit but that somehow we know the spirit has an effect. I keep picking up this feather. So one of them might be to use feathers in a picture, in a mobile perhaps, 
but I encourage you to create something in, in, a, in a gentle and prayerful way. So if you look at this, this is um, a, a dove that we've cut out from, from a piece of paper with just a wash of different watercolour paints on it. And you can do that in a really prayerful way, praying and sensing God with you perhaps as you do it. You could even stick some feathers on, couldn't you? And here's an idea. This is one that I, I, I thought was um, quite a good one. There's some other feathers here, a bit more like the ones that you find in the garden, a bit stiffer. And I thought you could again, you could dip one into some watery paint. You can see watery paint. I'm going to tip it on the computer if I'm not careful and use it like a quill. And you could write a prayer or a little drawing. This is a very quick thing I did just before filming this. You probably can't see it's the, the wrong way around the words, isn't it? But it's love. And you could just use that quill to write something prayerfully. It's a bit like that story of the disciples using um, languages that others could understand. Maybe it could be a letter to somebody. So I hope you can come up with lots of creative ideas for how you can somehow show that the spirit is with us and pray about that as you as you do it, um, even though we can't see the spirit. So I'm going to end with a short prayer. It's helpful just to not speak straight away, but just to be still. Loving God, may your spirit be a gentle friend when we need to know you're with us, a powerful strength when we need courage to do what is right. And with your spirit in us, help us to love and to make a difference in your world. Amen.